Hi everybody, Troy from the Off Grid Project. This is the first official Off Grid Project video day. Um, I've been reading the comments and I want to thank everybody who's come over to the Off Grid Project uh, YouTube channel. I want to thank you all for coming over and following me. Uh, for those of you who came over from the do-it-yourself world, you know what's been going on. For those of you who are new to this channel or are finding it now, Welcome to the Off Grid Project. I will do a video explaining everything for those of you who are new, so bear with me while I get my thoughts straight on what I'm going to say. I don't script anything. I have been reading the comments on both channels today. I've been in and out quite a bit and running to and fro, so I want you to, to know that although right now I'm going to give you a little runaround of what I've been up to today and a bit of a summary, uh, I'm going to promise you that's the end of the summary videos for the most part. Because I read for a lot of people don't want to see summary videos. Well, it was 20 degrees out when I got up this morning. So, camera batteries do not like, at least my general purpose camera batteries do not like 20 degrees. So, I learned from last winter. You may Some of you may remember last winter I didn't do a lot of video um, outside work because the camera just couldn't handle it. It just... The battery goes out within like a short time. Uh, right now it's about maybe 40 degrees, so uh, the battery can handle a, a, a bit more of a video. I guess what I'm going to have to do to get through this winter is get something that can handle the, the intense cold. So it's going to cost me a bit, but I'm going to have to get a camera that can handle the intense cold. Um, for one, to keep you guys interested, and two, to show you what I do all day long. Because I've been running around all over the property today. Uh, cleaning up here and there, working on wood here and there, heating the tiny house on wheels. Uh, wood stove has been going for three days straight. That's a cozy. Right now it's 80 degrees in there, so I got to get in there and uh, open up some windows. But I've been running around out here, so I wasn't regulating the temperature in there. Um, we had a deep freeze last night. No more garden. It's done. So I'll take you around and give you a walk around. But again, I want to apologize for the recent summary videos it has been pretty intense with uh, my trying to clean up the property to get Melanie here um, the whole front area up there as you've seen on Saturday's video all up in front of the truck camp and out in front of the RV all in front of the meadow here and in front of the house is all cleaned up now I've got behind the house a little bit I've got to move the storage tent which I've been working on today and um, still gathering firewood so let me show you around a little bit what I've been up to and uh, again tomorrow I'll figure a way I don't know how but I'm gonna figure a way to take my camera with me as I work um, I just don't know how to do it with the intense cold we've got right now it's just I don't know maybe I'll just like show little clips here and there and then toss the camera inside for a while and bring it out show little clips here and there and toss it in for a while it's the only way I'm gonna be able to do it to let you see what I'm doing other than that, just trust me today, I'm going to take you a walk around, and uh, and tomorrow we'll be back on schedule, the off-grid project, as you love it, with daily videos showing what I do here at the off-grid homestead. So, uh, let's have a look around. Alright, the tent behind the house has to go, alright? That tent has to go, so my priority right now is to empty that tent really fast. So I've been literally running back and forth between that tent and the storage tent out there, emptying this tent, and I have been working inside the tiny house on wheels. Forgive the garbage bags, those are seals to keep the bugs out when I have the window open. Been working in the kitchen in the tiny house on wheels, sorting and organizing. Um, I have to f make space, and get. The, I've been taking tools out, putting them in the workshop, and organizing space in the cabinets in the kitchen to put my kitchen stuff which I've been sorting out as I work in the tent here and I'm pulling things out I'm putting them here so these are boxes of kitchen stuff and books that I will be integrating into the tiny house on wheels later on this evening I'm um, sorry I haven't done video but I don't think you want to watch me cleaning my kitchen cupboards really I, I did not think that that was going to be exciting so forgive me for that and I don't think you want to watch me putting this stuff away. So I'm not going to record that. So just uh, trust me that that's what I've been up to today. Um, all this stuff is going in there tonight. 
So I've, uh, essentially I'm cleaning out all of the shelves in there and reorganizing. And of course Melanie's, Melanie's going to get here and she's going to redo the whole entire thing. So, <laughs> but anyway, I have to get the stuff in there. And let me take you over to the tent over here, out back. Now some of you who have been following my videos may notice that there's looks different in here. I've been actually condensing, packing, and concentrating. There's the trunk that I got the other day. I've got to clean that and uh, paint it. I've been really, really condensing in here to save space. I haven't yet built the other shelf. I'm hoping to get as much into this shelving unit as I can before I build the other shelf. And this has caused me to really condense and sort through stuff. Now, a lot of these boxes are kitchen items. And I used to live on the grid. I used to have an appliance for every single thing. Now, if you go through your kitchen and you imagine how much you have in your normal kitchen, and then you consider trying to cram that into a tiny house on wheels, uh, you're going to be in for a shock. If you consider how much an average person has, think microwave oven, toaster oven, rice cooker, crock pot, um, what else? A toaster, a blender, um, different, uh, well, you know what I mean, a lot of stuff. So when Melanie gets here, uh, it's going to be fun, I think, for her and I to go through all of this stuff and sort out what we're going to keep and what we're not. And then there's going to be a major Craigslist giveaway or a big bulk sale or something, I don't know, this winter or next spring. And we're, Melanie and I are going to clean through all, sort through all this stuff and all the stuff that's still over there in that tent and get rid of anything that's not necessary. So I got a job for you, Melanie. You and I have got a lot to do sorting through what you want to keep in the kitchen and what's going to go. You're the boss of the kitchen, so uh, that'll be yours. I'll help you sort through it. You tell me what stays and what goes. So this is for you, Melanie. Anyway, that's what I've been up to. Sorting, condensing, and uh, packing into the tiny house on wheels. And I'm sorry, but I'm quite sure that does not make for interesting video. So uh, it's been a really boring day, I think, for you guys. Or would have been. Um, but that's what I've been up to today. Let me uh, show you the garden. Chicken update. Everybody's asking, where is the chickens? How are the chickens? I want to see a chicken update. Alright, I've got five bantams left. There's a uh, big boy. That's King Rooster the house now. Alright, he's pretty. He's a pretty boy. Well, that's King Rooster the house. And there's a... Uh, what did I call them? Free spirit? The, the two birds that were always running away last year. They're pretty happy now. And then there's a little guy who uh, hasn't really found his voice yet. He's a pretty rooster too, but he's not really noisy. He's pretty quiet. And there's a couple other girls right there. Actually, that gold one would be his mate. And hopefully next year I'm going to mate them up and uh, have little, little chickens. So, now over here, sadly, after the vandalism and attacks, the big silver rooster died of his wounds, and the beautiful red uh, rooster, the younger red rooster, died of his wounds. Actually, I put him down because when somebody or something ripped open the entire, entire side of my chicken fence, all the way across back to the tent and beyond, Somebody ripped out or something ripped out the entire row, which left then animals and predators to get to my birds. So what you see here is all I've got left out of 50 chickens. Um, there's a black one over there. She's a pretty one. Okay. And I got some other pretty birds. Funny enough, most of the beautiful birds that I got last winter are the ones that are alive yet. So this is it. This is all I've got left. I am happy that I got some pretty birds. And they're providing me with some eggs. They're feeding me pretty well. My good old birds. There's Big Red. That's Big Red. Let's see. He uh, he found his voice again. I don't know where his comb is. It's odd. He doesn't have a comb. I don't know what happened. I wonder if he got... I didn't even notice that. I wonder if he lost that in the attack. But he doesn't have a comb. So, these two are hens. At least I think there were hens. That one now looks like a rooster, but that always was a hen, I thought. 
Yeah, I think that's a hen. No, it's looking like a rooster now. Huh, odd. Well, interesting. I thought I lost a rooster and a hen, but I get no, I thought I lost the two roosters. I guess I lost a rooster and a hen is what I lost. So, in that, I lost a big silver rooster and a hen. And I got a rooster left. Well, there's Big Red. He's uh, going to be three years old. Oh, no, he's, what is he now? Two years old as a spring. Yeah, so he's two and a half. And he's an old bird. So, they're all just looking at me begging for food. That's a beauty. That's a pretty bird. And the silkies. So, that's all I got left. When, uh, when the fence was down, I lost a lot of birds when I was in the Philippines. With the exception of my herbs, which are still looking pretty good. Some of these herbs are very cold, hardy plants. Most of my garden is dead. That's, uh, what is that? Thyme. Uh, lemon thyme. And I got hot and spicy oregano, which is sort of scraggly, but still growing well underneath all that. And the low cat mint, I think that is. And all these other herbs. I've got all my herbs are still growing and looking good. Uh, chickens got out today and we're in here scratching. Uh, sadly, it's done. That's it. It's over. And last night even the, the fruit that was growing got spoiled. It froze and thawed. So it's over. Uh, the tomatoes got frozen last night, so they're ruined. So I guess I, I might just let the chickens in. So I'm really sad about that because I was really starting to gather in the harvest now. Um, you remember those were fluffy and beautiful. So they did not like the freeze at all. They're done. And the tomatoes are, most of the tomatoes are wrecked in a bad way. They froze. All my peppers are dead. Well, that's pretty much a, that's it. That's the end. Now, I do have some root vegetables that are still growing and are actually going to provide me with leaves throughout the next weeks, maybe even one or two months. So I have a couple of these. There's one here. There's one right here. And they have nice, tasty leaves. So they're still going to provide me with food. They're very, very cold, hearty vegetables. So these guys are going to give me some little bit of greens and vegetables. And there's some wild herbs. There's dandelion right next to it that I'm still eating. There's some uh, plantain, wild plantain. And there's the uh, sorrel. Sorrel is a diehard. That stuff will grow all winter. So I get some vitamins still out of my garden. Now it's going to be time to uh, cover with cardboard mulch and leaves and everything else. It's time to bury this garden. All right. I'm going to flatten everything and bury this garden before winter and then let it go dormant and sleep all winter underneath the leaves and the mulch and the cardboard. So I'll be going to the dollar stores and getting boxes and boxes and boxes of cardboard and lay it down like I did here underneath and it was a success. The cardboard stopped all uh, weeds. It looks rough because that's leaves on top from the, from the fall and from leaves that I had thrown on there which has survived the wind blasting, but that was weed free. It was a weed free zone. So now it is time to, uh, to flatten out the garden with cardboard. So the chickens are in the jungle and they are eating. They are eating the, the weeds and the green growth. It is actually quite nice for them in there. I let it grow wild this year uh, for shelter, for protection, and for massive quantities of food. And they are eating, so it's saving me a lot of food costs right now until that stuff freezes and it's done. So that's a, that's a good thing. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. I'm going to get back to sorting and cleaning and putting stuff away inside the tiny house. But there's your chicken update. There's the end of the garden for this year, sadly. I hate the end of uh, growing season. And that was officially the end. It's frozen and done. Like I said, I'll be nibbling here and there, but that's pretty much it. So, unless I find something else to show you or I do something else other than what I'm up to right now, I'll talk to you all later. Troy from the Off Grid Project, out.